once around Iota Horologii. So this star is in the southern constellation of Horologium, the clock, and it's a fairly faint star at a magnitude of 5.4, so only just above the magic 6 that is the limit for typical naked eye observations in good condition. And Horologium lies below the constellation of Eridanus, if you're looking down from the north, um, and is a fairly faint constellation in itself. But this star is fairly nearby. We're now 56 and a half light years away, so it's not right in the sun's backyard, but it is fairly close to us. And that gives us a good opportunity to make studies of it. The other thing that's attractive about it is that it is fairly similar to the Sun, class G0V. G0, a little bit hotter than the Sun, which is a G2, and V, well that V, if you see that on a star class, means that it's a main sequence star. It's actually the Roman numeral 5. The temperature 6207 Kelvin, so a few hundred degrees hotter than Sol, the Sun, and 121% of its mass, 116% of its diameter, but 164% of the power output. That 20% extra mass gives you a big boost in total power output and raises the temperature and increases the uh, surface area of the star by making it larger and overall that means there's a lot more energy comes away from the star. So this is actually an image of the Sun but it's so similar that I used it for Iota Horologii. Main sequence means converting hydrogen to helium in the core still and when I say still this is actually quite a young star for a star of its class 500 million years so that's um, nine times less of the stellar evolution than perhaps uh, the is the case with the sun but we're not sure it could be 300 it could be 900 there's quite a difficulty with aging these sorts of g-class stars they're not very good at bringing to the surface any of the heavier elements that they make in the core and as a result of that it's quite difficult to see how far they've gone in turning hydrogen to helium in the core all you have in the outer layers is really the uh, original helium so you can work out probably when they were born based on this typical composition of the universe at the time from previous generations of stars the oldest stars would be three quarters hydrogen and one quarter helium and the more recently they've been born they probably picked up slightly more helium um, but it's a little bit of a difficulty in this type of star trying to figure out the age now it's possibly an escapee from the famous Hyades star cluster. We have a lovely picture of the Hyades cluster on the right here with the nearby, 47 light years away I think it is, star Aldebaran, the reddy orange giant that's uh, relatively near and the rather further away that group of stars behind it which make up the rest of the image there, that's the Hyades star cluster. Now, we think those are about 625 million years old as a cluster, and the open cluster is beginning to break apart as a result. And it's, it's about 130 light years away from us for the cluster, so the star has actually closed in on us to less than half that distance now. But the metal content, and by metals the astronomers mean the elements heavier than helium, all the heavier elements seem to match the contents of the star Iota Horologiae with the members of the Hyades cluster, not counting Aldebaran there, which is just a line of sight star, nothing whatever to do with them. But in 2018, it was found that the lithium content didn't seem to match. It was only half as abundant. So maybe that is telling us that they're not from the Hyades. An orbital modelling of the trajectory of the star seems to point somewhere else. 
so we're not entirely sure. So the star itself also is rather peculiar in that it seems to show a magnetic sunspot cycle or star spot cycle that only takes 1.6 years. Our Sun, Sol, takes 11 years and usually this correlates fairly well with the size of the star and the rotation speed of the star and they go in lockstep. The smaller the star the slower it rotates and the longer the sunspot cycle takes. So this is slightly heavier than the Sun, only by 20%, but this sunspot cycle seems to be going way too fast. The shortest for any Sun-like star that we know of. Very strange indeed. But it's possible that that's a 1.6 year variation on top of a longer cycle that we've failed to identify. So there's still work to be done looking at exactly what's going on with the star itself. But one of the most interesting things about looking at these sun-like stars, of course, is to look for planets. And in 1999, there was a report of a planet in an Earth-like orbit around the star. And the year later, in 2000, a dust disk was imaged. And we have the picture of Iota Horologii on the right with a coronagraph. You can see the central circular region and the four black spokes of the machinery that's been used to block out the starlight and the starlight coming around diffracting around that somewhat but it's also indicating that there might well be this dust disk in the image and the consequence of that was that iota horologii was put on the target list for tests the ter terrestrial planet finder and this is out there looking for um, exoplanets around all of these sorts of stars. In fact, it was number 69 on the list. So it should well get some more information on that soon when those observations are in. Now, what we think we have is a very large gas giant planet. And this actually comes from data from Gaia in data release 3 from the Gaia spacecraft showing that there is a 6.2 Jupiter mass gas giant planet, a super gas giant, in an orbit 308 days, just under a year, and 0.96, so essentially 1 AU from the star. Now 1 AU from this star is going to be slightly warmer than the Earth is around the Sun, because the star is a little bit hotter and the orbit takes less time because the star is correspondingly 20% more massive and so it all fits with Kepler's laws but um, maybe this giant uh, of a planet here is not going to be habitable if it's a super gas giant but it might well have a set of moons and one of those might be uh, large enough to be a sort of uh, Earth-like moon going around it a larger planet probably has larger moons. It may, may have accumulated from a denser region, and that all makes sense, so it's well worth studying. And the rings, well, we don't know they're there. That's just for artistic purposes in this lovely image, um, and, well, it's entirely possible, I suppose, but we just don't have any data. But there has been some interesting speculation about Iota Horologii b, and that is that it might have a set of friends orbiting around the star with it, so-called Earth-sized Trojan planets. Now this image is not Iota Horologii b, we don't have this data yet, but it's very similar to what we think might be going on. This is a system called PDS-70 with a planet PDS-70b imaged with ALMA, the radio telescope array in uh, the desert out there in Chile and it has seen a dust disk and a very large planet going around the central star and 60 degrees ahead of the planet is a second planet locked in the Lagrange point clearly looks like a less massive less bright object and it appears to be at that 60 degree angle um, and that's where we find Trojan asteroids 
leading and trailing Jupiter around their orbit and indeed some of the other planets have Trojan asteroids trapped in the Lagrange point and it may well be that there is a fairly large planet here so um, PDS 70b worth watching but we believe there's also possibly one in co-orbit with Iota Horologii b. Orbiting further out around the same star we've got a 600 day orbit for another planet going around. Now this may not be the uh, confirmed detection, it may well just be an effect of behaviour of the star and we've seen that in a number of cases where the rotation of the star and star spots moving around on the disk of the star have fooled us into thinking that we have planets in periods that are one, two, three, five, seven times the uh, rotation period of the star. It can be quite deceiving. Um, so clearly more to come from this interesting system when we get to turn the James Webb telescope to it and uh, indeed the results from TESS. So I think this one's worth watching. And with that, I'll leave it. Thanks very much for listening to that short once-around Iota Horologii.